the rise of globalism means that it's getting harder to hold the power to account. And that's not just about scrutiny, it's about the basic aspects of democracy. Before we used to be able to hire and fire people in charge by electing them and getting rid of them at the next election. But now there are two problems. One is about the international institutions and another is about corporations. Corporatism is gaining too much power going hand in hand with big government and that means that decisions are being made at different places without us having any power. We used to complain about big government. We used to complain about the European Union as a big institution. But now we also have corporations and other institutions. In this video, we're going to talk about C40 Cities, the Climate Leadership Group. We have talked about C40 Cities a lot on this channel. And some of you guys have been commenting, asking for me to go through more of the background and uh, the people in charge, the people behind it. Uh, so the C40 Cities is essentially a, a, a forum uh, that was uh, and a lobby group that was formed uh, to get an, uh, a huge number of cities and uh, mayors across the world to sign up to a collective, a collectivized idea uh, to create a sustainable environment. That sounds lovely, isn't it? Yeah. But that means they're going to come up with centralized policy uh, that are uh, mostly about blanket policies and there is always a vested interest involved without any uh, scrutiny, without asking us the plebs, ordinary commoners, to have a say. This is the issue. So in this video, we're going to talk about the funders and the partners of C40, the people who are giving money and the people who are around the table, who actually have a say. It's not me and you, it's these guys. These people provide critical support and a strat strategic insight to help advance the mission and deliver on pragmatic uh, programs. Yeah, but actually, it's not pragmatic. It goes, it, it, anything that they're doing is the opposite of being pragmatic. It's all about the program. But let's talk about these people. So when it comes to the strategic partner funders, you got Bloomberg, but not just Bloomberg, the Bloomberg Philanthropies. Ooh, that sounds lovely. Working in over 120 countries around, around the world to ensure better, longer lives for a greater number of people. That, well, that sounds lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Children's Investment Fund Foundation. And of course, all the other relevant organization that sounds so lovely because uh, they have a lot of virtue and they do like to signal <laughs> that they have the virtue. So the problem with this is that in the past, charity work, philanthropy used to be more private and more behind the scenes. It wasn't really that uh, in your face. And even when you were doing philanthropy or charity work, you didn't really demand access to the top. You didn't do it uh, for having privilege. You didn't do it to get close to presidents and prime ministers and elected governments. This is the issue that we now have. And look at the major funders. So this is the other problem, by the way, because this is supposed to be an independent body, but it's been funded by the British government as well as all the others, including uh, the German government uh, and by the Federal Ministry for the Environment, Nature, Conservation and the Nuclear Safety. Uh, and many others, including Denmark, the Ministry for uh, Foreign Office in Denmark. Now, in this country, we have the Foreign Office uh, basically funding uh, partly. Uh, they are a major funder of uh, C40 cities. I don't understand this because why can't we have any say? Why can't we know about it? Unless you have heard about C40 cities and you go on their website, like what I did, people on the streets walking around don't know that when they pay taxes at the end of the year, at the end of well, each month, if they are an employee, then some of the money will go to the NHS to get wasted. Some of the money goes to the, the home office uh, to protect our borders. That gets wasted. And uh, a lot of money goes to get wasted. But then some of it goes to dictatorships. We know that. Uh, foreign aid. And some of it is actually going towards funding either charity organizations or campaign groups that are fighting against our own government and our own country and some who are globalist in, in entities who are making decisions without asking our consent. So let's have a look at some of the uh, other groups involved. The Clean Air Fund has also another philanthropic uh, initiative with a mission to tackle air pollution. That sounds lovely, but why do you need big money and big influence around it? Climate Works Foundation is another one, Global Environmental Facilities is another one, and many others, but I want to focus on these guys especially IKEA and L'Oreal, because as private corporations, 
who have been selling themselves to us as customers, that they are supposed to be businesses who are simply there to make profit and provide a product or service, and that was fine. That was free market capitalism. Then the rise of corporatism happened, and then the rise of globalization. So you got basically a, a corporate statist uh, in the name of globalization, internationalism, cooperating with each other around the world. So we got basically international businesses, uh, multinational businesses like IKEA or L'Oreal, with headquarters in New York or London or Paris or wherever they are. But they are acting, they have so much influence over policy ideas, they might not be able to sit around the table like in Parliament and make mandatory regulations, but they will feed in their ideas to politicians and those politicians will make those policies. And who has a say? Not us. I thought they were just businesses where we would just go as customers to buy products from. No, apparently not. They are activists. Well, speaking of activists, let's talk about the Open Society Foundations. Oh dear, yes. Open Society Foundations for the past few years, for decades, have been very proactive when it comes to being uh, interventionist around the world in the name of being humanitarian, right? Now, in the name of being humanitarian, the Open Society have been going around to dictatorships, to different continents, different countries, and uh, without being welcome, by the way, and they are influencing local policies and governance of these countries, sort of like what Tony Blair does with his uh, institution. And again, if I were one of those countries, where there is a dictatorship or a democracy, I will still be offended. Who is George Soros or Tony Blair to go to these countries and tell them what to do? And they are also doing it to us. I don't understand. We didn't elect any of you. So what is the point of electing a prime minister if you guys are going to give feed them information and ideas? What is the point of democracy? So. Look at this. This is the board of directors. Ooh. So we've got the chair of C40 Cities, which is Sad IQ Khan, the mayor of London. Then you get a couple of very interesting characters here. Now, feel free to pause the video, then go and Google each one of them. But because by doing basic research, you could find some uh, very interesting idea, uh, stories about their backgrounds. For example, the <laughs> governor, Robert Mambe. And um, it's uh, quite fascinating because this guy um, had some controversies in the past. Uh, yep, he was uh, <laughs> he was <laughs> being investigated for fraud a couple of times and uh, essentially misleading uh, the authorities. Uh, but he's still a governor. You know, that's just how it works. It doesn't really matter. You still have power. But it's not just him. Uh, look at the mayor, Mayor Kate Gallagher from Phoenix in the United States. Oh my God, the, the, this human was absolutely fascinating over the last few years because uh, uh, there's been a, ma a number of protests uh, outside her office, um, especially over the last couple of years, because she's been completely ignoring any of the concerns. But that's, that's just normal, right? That's what politicians do. They ignore people. But controversies included uh, the her treatment of homeless people and the housing crises in Phoenix, uh, and she's been completely ignoring any of the policy ideas, and her office completely shut down everything, and people have been protesting, and she just doesn't care, because she's already in power, she's more busy and distracted with going to the C40 meetings to have meetings with uh, uh, Sadiq, Sadiq Khan and many others, than actually looking after her own city in Phoenix. No, 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 that's not what they're concerned about. Now, part of the other board of directors, we've got uh, Michael Bloomberg, another beauty, uh, who is also a massive, massive globalist. And you've got Justin Johnson, the climate director at the Children's Investment Fund Foundation. Why does the Children's Investment Fund Foundation have a climate director? I mean, what, what is going on in this world? <laughs> I have a feeling you have to have certain divisions in every uh, company, every business even if it's a small company. So I think the Maya Tusi TV channel is going to be creating a uh, climate division as well as a diversity division. I don't think this channel is di diverse enough. I don't think we have enough uh, ginger people on this channel. It's just full of uh, me. <laughs> we need more diversity on Tusi TV, guys. Uh, so if you, anybody wants to create a division and be part of the, the head of diversity, that would be great. Now, <laughs> the rest of the people on this board of directors, oh, they're, they're just absolutely fascinating humans. But I want to focus on one, other, one more person on this. Shirley Rodriguez, the Deputy Mayor for Environment and Energy in Greater London. Yes, Shirley Rod Rodriguez is a sad IQ's uh, deputy who went around and uh, intimidated uh, 
and put pressure on scientists who uh, conducted research on Euler's and their research said uh, Euler's is bad and uh, Shirley was not too happy and um, <laughs> she basically sent out emails to them saying can you change the the result of your consultations and uh, the, the scientists initially were like surely you don't want us to change our facts and she said don't call me Shirley but, she said, but that's your name <laughs> Anyway, jokes aside, we're going to keep you guys posted on this nonsense that is spreading around our country and the Western world uh, like a virus, which is called globalist corporatism. I'm Maya Tusi, and we are the media.